there today I'm unboxing a PTZ IP camera so this particular camera is a 4 megapixel camera with um, 80 meter infrared range it's a full HD camera so 1080p so being a PTZ camera so it does pan tilt and zoom zoom wise it does 18 times optical zoom so for outdoor and indoor use company that manufactures this is WGCC retails for around 180 pounds so let's have a quick look around the packaging initially it's very basic packaging got some product details there and that's it let's have a look what we get inside okay dear friend this is seller of Amazon thank you for your order so just a thank you there get a little CD okay we've got a quick user manual details to get you started okay let's take the foam off okay let's get the other bits and pieces out so we've got a power adapter here just to show 12 volts 3 amps output UK plug on there build quality of all this seems good nothing to be concerned about the actual socket actually has a fuse on there as well so that's good as well okay this is to seal the actual ethernet cable that connects to the camera so let's have a look at the actual camera itself it's quite heavy really wow looks like a good build quality on there I'll cover these areas this will have um, a QR code to actually add in the camera so I don't want to show that okay so what you get you get an earth cable on there you get the actual connector for the power so there's DC 12 volts on there and an Ethernet connector seems good no cover on there obviously motorized as well but yeah seems very solid very well built got some screws here so obviously if you're installing and you wanted to sort of take this off initially and just have the brackets so there's less to sort of mess around with you could unscrew these and it will just pop off installation wise four screws to at either end and obviously this would have to be fed in somewhere or you could have it going underneath or at the side into some sort of waterproof junction box so yeah looks good initially very nice build quality okay so we've got some of the bits and pieces laid out on the table here just wanted to show the actual quick user manual all in English just a note pretty straightforward and it's got details of the app you should install so that's called high C and there's some QR codes for that the other sides all in English as well so all good very minimal amount to go through the next thing to show is the actual seal for the Ethernet connector so if you had your Ethernet cable you should be able to just feed that through uh, you can put this rubber seal on there like so get your cable through there and then on this end you get your o-ring that's come with it you place that over connect the actual ethernet cable and then gently we'll just push that into position and then lock it into place and then we can just continue pushing that down now this particular cable has quite a large connector um, bit of rubber there so 
I'd probably want to recrimp it just to make a nice sealed connection but just gives you the idea of how it sort of connects up and then you just screw it into place like so and there you go okay so let's get it powered on so I'll leave the Ethernet connected and then I'll get the power adapter plug in one end here where it says 12 volts and then the actual power supply cable here I'll plug that in just at the side here okay we'll just slowly turn this around I just want to show a couple of things so as the camera is initializing you can see um, I'll show details there so you've got the IP address and then the username and passwords so that will get you going okay I'll leave that initializing and the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to get the CD you get with the actual device put that into my computer and let's see what you get on there hopefully there should be some discovery software to be able to pick this camera up and change the IP address okay so with the CD in the computer it opens up and this is what's on the actual CD so you've got a user manual so instead of printing it obviously they've put it all into a word document all the details there all in English as well just to note got some um, could be screenshots as well there you go quite a lot of detail in there HP HD IP camera English manual the other one was English as well Let's see what this one looks like okay okay again all in English color images in there as well nice to get a paper you use a manual a lot of time so you're not flicking through a word document as you're doing this okay let's see what else is on there CMS let's click on that it's a PDF file let's see what details we get in that sounds familiar to me I think I have used something like this before CMS I think it's like an app to be able to record the footage but let's see Okay, let's have a quick skip through there. Installation details. Ah, yeah, and it is an app to enable you to um, record the actual footage from the camera. Okay, let's go back. Got IP wizard. Let's double click that. There's an EXE there. Okay, app, this is discovery software here, so we'll hit search. There you go, it's found the camera quite quickly, no messing around. Now that's not the IP address for my network, so let's change it to this and click modify network, modify to complete, I guess that's done. Okay, so now we've got the correct IP address configured let's go to internet explorer and connect to the camera it's got a login dialog here let's log in with the username and password we've been made aware of already and let's maximize the window click here download control so let's do that run that Let's install it with the defaults. Finish. It says refresh page. Now it's saying this page wants to run the following add on ActiveX, the ActiveX control of IPC player from not available. So we'll allow that. And there you go. Connected to the camera. 
Right, let's go through the actual options we have here. So we have two tabs. First tab is browse and the stream type. So that's the, I guess the picture quality. You can go down, substream. It's like a lower resolution. And then let's go to mainstream, which is the higher definition. Now picture quality does look good, very, very sharp. Okay, let's go to PTZ control. Oh, very good, very responsive. So this enables you to spin it around. You got zoom on there as well. It's got out of focus. Let me zoom out a little bit. Probably better to set this up outside to give a better idea of the actual quality you get, but still very sharp. Auto focus on there as well, so no messing around. Okay, PTZ function. Okay, so here you can actually set up to actually do the PTZ sort of tour, so actually zoom around an area. Okay, let's move on to setting. So you've got some basic information here network settings, alarm settings, NTP server settings, video settings, MJPEG video settings. Okay, let's go through the options. So while we're in system, you've got time as well. So you can adjust as required. Simple as that, just click save to save it. NTP details there, sync now. PC. Okay, synced with my PC. Date and times here. Advanced firmware upgrade details. You can reset to factory settings and reboot the device as well. Network. Okay, interesting. IP address details, FTP, SMTP for email, QoS. IGMP, ports, okay, number of ports there, interesting, you've got OnVIF as well on there, so that's the port we need for that, DDNS, P2P, and that's the different protocols, okay, we move on to the camera, so basic, basic settings, some details there, so I've just nudged the camera in the background, hence the movement. Exposure settings. See what you have on there. A lot, a lot of customization. A lot of features you can customize on this. Quite impressed. Effect settings, white balance, and obviously you can reset if you've messed it up. Video and audio. This is interesting. Encoding type, pick one of these. Resolution, it's at the top resolution. So that's 1080p, so it's above that. So obviously four megapixel on there. There you go, you can adjust the different streams as well. Character display, motion detection. Okay, so you can add an area for motion detection privacy mask okay this is an interesting one if i tick that i can just type in test for instance hit save and then draw a privacy mask and there you go it's blanked it out so say you had an area where you didn't want to show something so say it's a neighbor's boundary or uh, a wall with the neighbor where you could see into their garden, you could blank it out like this. So very good, really good. ROI, path, where to save things, and audio. PTZ function, there you go again. You can have a little play about with this. Alarm option here as well. So you have a schedule for the actual alarm. 
record options there's no actual SD card in there or mini SD card so this isn't really valid manage users so you can put in additional users and then a log system startup and then things that have been happening so yeah very impressive a lot of options there very comprehensive now the next thing I want to try to see is if my existing CCTV system will pick up the camera with this system actually having on riff on there so let me try that out okay so there's the PTZ interface connected via your computer so if I now flip over to this screen here we can actually see the PTZ camera running on my NVR so network video recorder so my CCTV system so just to highlight a few things about this so I'll go to quick set and this highlights all the other cameras I have and I hit search and it picked it up like so the port number which was a bit of a surprise so I left it as a default it found so 34567 and the actual camera itself the PTZ one these are the settings it's got I didn't enter a password and it seems to be working so it seems quite good in that respect quite easily just started working without messing around but the only odd thing was the encode value so now obviously it is a 4 megapixel resolution on there and if I click OK, OK to that if you look at the time in the corner it stops working now at that resolution it doesn't seem to be coping on the actual NVR so if I change it now to let's try 3 megapixel still no good look at times not working we'll go to 5 as well just to prove ooh, 5 just to prove a point okay to that still nothing still at 0 2 in that corner and now finally let's go to 1080p and there you go it started working so it did confuse me a little bit I thought why wouldn't it work in full screen whereas when I look at the smaller picture just there it would work so let's go back to that so picture quality wise it's very good it's a shame we can't make full use of the 4 megapixel camera um, clarity on this so you can tell it is just 10, uh, 1080p now for me to make the most of this I'd probably have to change my NVR you know to fully utilize this picture quality but still um, not complaining picture quality is still very good okay so let's show the actual PTZ in action so if I now obviously I'm on the screen for my computer and I've connected to the camera so let's try moving it around so obviously it's moving on the actual NVR and on the computer so now let's zoom into an area just to show the actual quality you can get out of this camera and this is the whole point of buying something like this to obviously enable you to have it's sort of flexibility where you can just manoeuvre the camera around and zoom into areas so let's zoom into perhaps that location there very impressive really is let's keep going so this is the 18 times zoom on there and look at that clarity is very impressive so you can actually see the wire that's coming down for the uh, fairy lights we've got in the garden and that's the maximum zoom you can get on there so there you go on the NVR as well come back to the PC view so let's go down slightly clarity is very good and you can even work out the blades of grass that's that's the level of detail you're seeing with this and you can even amend the focus if you wanted to if you wanted to focus in on something else but no real need to do that 
Let's go. Look, there you go. Okay, so let's let's zoom out and then give that bit of perspective of how much zoom you're getting with this system. There you go. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. The quality of the zoom is amazing, really is. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show is putting the Android app on your Android phone. Now, one of the issues I've got, my actual NVR, which is here, there's no option to actually control the PTZ camera. So, got two choices here. Obviously, put on the Android app, or upgrade my NVR, which I'm now considering, because obviously I'd like to make use of this um, enhanced quality, picture quality. So, um, I'm covering a s slight area of the screen. So in network, P2P, just there, uh, just behind my phone is a scan code for the actual camera. So it will let you use QR reader and scan the code in and add the camera. So I don't want to show that on camera. So I'll put the app on to show you how that works. So the app's called Hi C. So if I go to there, type in Hi C, there it is. Hit install. Okay, so now the app's installed. Let's open it up. It's the usual thing with these apps, you can register an account, but quite odd with this one, you've got visitor login, which is quite a useful one. So let's click that and add device. There's two options here, wired device or wireless device. So this is a wired device, it's not wireless. And you've got some methods of actually adding it. Scan QR, so that's a quick way of doing it and also you've got LAN GUID search so let's do it that method so let's give it a moment and there you go it's found it so if I just cover up this sort of region click it and just save it and there you go as simple as that to add it so let's select it and that's a live picture at the moment. Let's change it to high def. Picture quality is really good. You can actually move it about like this, which is an excellent way of doing it really. No messing around. And then let me maneuver over to this area. And then these are some of the other options you've got. And let's do the zoom. This is what I wanted to show. Keep hitting it. There you go. Is that maximum zoom? Yep, that's maximum zoom. You can actually see the actual brickwork there. Picture quality is absolutely amazing. So let's zoom out. And quite nice just to be able to do that. Let's take this back. Let's see what else we have. There's no sound on this, so obviously that's not going to work. Um, no memory card, so that's for that. That looks like cloud-based saving. That's an interesting one. Taking a snapshot, taking a video, start a record as well. It's pretty cool. It's got a microphone button there. Obviously, that's not going to work as there's no microphone built into the device. So I've just put it back to HD and hit record again. If I hit that, it should go full screen. So there you go, very easy to put on and control. Obviously if you just using it as a standalone device as well, that can be possible without an NVR. So that's quite useful to know. Now let's give it a test to see if it works via 
my data connection. So I'll turn off my Wi-Fi. I don't think it will because I haven't really created a login on this. So I'll go back, let's stop recording. Obviously on data now, let's click it and it's showing offline. And just there is where it's showing offline. Okay, so I've left it a few seconds and miraculously, there you go, it's connected. So via my data connection, there you go, I'll click it. It's a 4G connection at the moment and it works. Wow, I'm amazed. So that's without me even creating a login on there. So good to note, let's go into full HD on this. Shift it into that. And with my data connection, there you go. Easily shift around. Okay, so it's the evening now. So let's have a play about with the picture quality and see what it's like. So there's a shed, as you can see. Let's try moving the camera around, see what the quality is like. Let's zoom in to maybe the lights just here. Clarity wise, it is very good again, even in the night time. Wow, okay, there you go. That's one of the um, fairy lights uh, we've got out there. And zooming in, you can clearly see it. There you go. Guess it is trying to focus in and out. Let's zoom down so it, you can tell what it is, so which is um, very impressive. There you go. Very clear indication there's a light there. And still you can see the grass quite clearly. Very impressed. And I've got the, obviously, the NVR just next to it as well, just to show you the clarity on that. So really good. Let's flip back again and zoom out briefly and we'll try and go a bit more into the distance so let's spin it this way and a little bit that way and let's zoom into like the shed area perhaps oh actually that's a good area let's go in there a bit more Wow, pretty good, really is. There you go. You actually see the weeds coming out over there and some of the bricks there holding up. Just this area here. Let's zoom out again. Sorry, let's go a bit more further up. See if we can get as much detail as possible. Okay, another property there. So let's try and zoom in maybe to the um, greenery there. Yep, it has managed it, yeah. You can see it clearly. Let's come down a little bit. There you go. Working pretty well. Let's flip back. To the NVR just to show you on there. Again it's working well and let me get my phone which is just here and just show you on there as well. Let me take the brightness up. There you go. And spin it around with this as well. Amazed, picture quality is really amazing in the evening as well. So very impressed by this. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing of this PTZ camera. You've seen the actual quality, the build quality of this, very solid build quality, very nice construction to it. You've seen how to configure it, very simple to configure. You know, obviously it comes with a default IP address, you just amend that, and then you can connect to it 
via your computer and then make the required amendments. Picture quality wise, I was blown away, really was. Um, at four megapixel, it was just amazing how clear it was. You could actually zoom in to a blade of grass um, and see it crystal clear. Now, the other thing to mention is obviously the zoom on there, 18 times optical zoom. And you saw for yourself, the quality of that was amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, so two things to note with this camera. So you're gonna need ethernet connectivity and you're gonna need power as well to plug in the actual power adapter. So obviously you're gonna to have to need a convenient place to install this where you can actually run power. So other than that, it's easy to set up. It was a little bit unfortunate that my NVR doesn't support the higher resolution. So I may in the background consider purchasing a higher resolution um, NVR to support this sort of system. So there you go. I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this particular PTZ camera. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.